loved going to libraries as a kid. At first, I fell for the place because of that smell of the polished wood and the old paper and the carpet. And being a Minnesotan, I loved that there was a lady paid by the county to tell me to be quiet. <laughs> I also knew that as long as I was in a library, my brother would never find me. And then something remarkable happened. After a few years, I started reading books. This place was teeming with information my parents didn't want me to know. Murder and sex and robbery and arson. Oh, oh, oh the arson. And the adults are like, oh, look, he's reading. How sweet. Were they clueless as to what was in this place? Fenimore Cooper and Jack London. Jack London really sealed the deal with Call of the Wild. The wolf in him lingered and the wild merely slept. Oh, man, I knew that. And the gap tooth repache, Albert E. Newman. Seriously, why worry, folks? And through all this, I started to learn about my life through books. Like when my parents divorced, I was already familiar with a legion of children cut from families. And now I could relate to them, all of them. So my family didn't shrink, it actually expanded. And so did my landscapes, outer terrains and countries from afar, whose major export always seemed to be flax. And every once in a while, Someone needed to do a little enhancement of the artwork in the, in the books, augmenting pictures of adding appendages or balloon bubbles over James Garfield or Chester A. Arthur saying, Sally is hot or this class sucks. A book is a discovery. Knowledge is acquired, but wisdom is recognized. And one day a beautiful hybrid arrived, the little free libraries, a library that finds you. You take a book, you slip it into your bag, and you keep going, and that's legal. I have, over the years, developed relationships with different little libraries. There's four boxes between my house and the coffee shop, and each one has a special meaning to me. I take turns checking them different routes and checking them like traps. One, one box politically leans to the right, and another a block over it leans to the left. So sometimes I'll take a little something out of the left box and walk it down to the right box. And on the way home, I'll grab something from the righty until I realized I was carrying the same book on Richard Nixon back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> Through one box, I watched a family grow. I know how old their kids are by their books, where they went on vacation, when they quit smoking, when the water heater went out. And one time I saw the homeowner getting out of his car and I yelled, try some vinegar on a cotton swab. <laughs> There was one book called The King of Little Things, and it was about a king, a giant king, his name was King Normus, and he commands everyone they have to listen to him. But it's the king of little things that actually triumphs by ordering the nails to jump out of the cell so his cell door falls down. And at one point he orders all the buttons to pop off of the king's pants and his pants fall down. So if you're like me, and I know I am, Sooner, sooner or later, you'll come to realize that it's the little things that matter. And these little libraries, like the Ukrainian mittens, like magic lamps, small but as rich as Alibaba's cave, like Long John Silver's chest, taking on the world one book at a time. Or to quote Shakespeare, he may be little, but he be fierce.